like to thank everybody for joining this webinar, the Introducing ePortal Start. I'm Jim Helwig. I'm chair of the ePortal Steering Committee. And a uh, quick peek at the agenda. I'm going to uh, give you one quick community update, but then uh, we'll do a little bit on ePortal 5, but the bulk of the uh, presentation today you're going to see is on ePortal Start. And we do hope to have plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. So for community updates, I'm uh, really pleased to uh, invite you all to come to UW-Madison in early December, where we're going to have uh, UPortal Developer Days. So this is a kind of resurrecting something that used to happen in the past. Uh, a long time ago. In fact, uh, we did hold a Developer Days uh, meeting years ago on the Madison campus. Uh, I hope the weather will be less rainy this year uh, than it was uh, at that particular time. But if you uh, look at the next slide, we'll have a little bit of information about that. Um, I posted this on the email lists as well. But the event will be Tuesday, December 5th through Thursday, December 7th. And the registration cost looks like it's going to be $100, which we think is uh, uh, pretty inexpensive. And that will include refreshments, but it, um, during the morning and the afternoon, it will not include uh, your meals, but there are going to be plenty of you know, great dining options in the area. But you're not coming just for the uh, food and refreshments, you're coming for the substance. And uh, looking at the survey that we put out on the email list uh, a month or so ago, there is interest in having a variety of things, from workshops, presentations, working sessions. And we will be forming the shape of that in even more detail over the next couple months and with your input by following that link at the bottom of this slide or in the emails that I have sent on the ePortal user list, I invite you to go and uh, ask notes about what you would be interested, if you're coming, what you'd be interested in covering and discussing. And we'll see well, what's appropriate to have a presentation on, but what might be more appropriate to just get together around a table and have a working session trying to flesh out the details of a particular topic. I do hope and anticipate that at the end of those, uh, at the end of that week, there will be more code contributed to uh, the U portal ecosystem. And this is not going to be just a time to sit around and talk. I'm sure we will have ample opportunity to get excited and, and write a little code and I look forward to going forward. I do not have a registration link yet, but if you go to that link, at the bottom of that page, there is an attendees list, and it would be fantastic if you, if you're, if you think you're gonna be able to come. Add your name to that attendees list. We can start to get a feel of who's going to be there, and uh, if you're gonna be there, we really wanna shape this event around you. Uh, uh, people can feel free to fire uh, and, uh, questions to that uh, email thread on the list as well. I will let you uh, take over, Drew, and move on to some uh, update on u 5 Excellent. That's exactly what I intend to do. But first, clearly, I want to mention that clearly this $100 regi uh, registration cost is inexpensive. The real cost of attending this event, of course, will be... Uh, travel and lodging and meals, uh, but uh, it is a very inexpensive event nonetheless, uh, and, and I want to point out that is, it is especially so because it's looking pretty certain that we will have facilitated training content there. Some portion of, uh, you know, of the three days, uh, during some portion of the three days, there will be available uh, facilitated training content workshops at, you know, three or four hours at a pop 
probably on uPortal 5, uPortal Start, working with either of those, working with uPortal Home. All right, uh, so I'll move on. First, we're going to talk about uPortal 5. Uh, so uPortal Start, the main focus of this webinar, is absolutely a uPortal 5 thing. And you'll see that uh, when we get to it in a moment. But we want to begin by talking about uPortal 5 at a higher level, uh, starting with this slide. And this is an update on uh, a slide you may have seen before in, in any number of uh, a few presentations. I've sort of modified it, improved it a little bit, but the sort of high-level design goals of uPortal 5 include these things. Top of the list and in, in bold, even sort of colorful bold, a new standard uh, for web accessibility. While the standard isn't new, it's it, the fact that it's our standard is new. We now uh, target uh, WCAG 2.0 level AA accessibility for uPortal and for uPortal ecosystem components. A tremendous amount in the in the kind of very tail end of last year, the beginning of this year, a tremendous amount uh, of effort was poured into auditing uPortal and uPortal components uh, to cataloging issues, analyzing those issues, and remediating, you know, planning and remediating those issues. So a, a tremendous amount of WCAG 2.0 level AA accessibility enhancements are included in uPortal 5. A lot of that work, for what it's worth, a lot of that work is also included in RHEL 4.3 patches, the tail end of uh, uPortal 4.3, but as yet we don't have a release of that that includes it. You could go get it yourself and build it locally, you know, as it, which is pretty customary for uPortal 4.3, but uh, it's not a part of a release as of yet. We also want to, uh, you know, another, this one is hard to quantify, uh, but uh, honestly, w one of the bigger themes of uPortal 5 is making the process of working with uPortal for developers, uh, for sysadmins, for DevOps, for administrators, making that process simpler, more modern, more customary, quicker, easier. So reducing the learning curve. Uh, you will see, I think, uh, how that theme plays out as we talk about uPortal Start. Sort of part and parcel with that, we want more modern deployments. Uh, we are no longer in love with the idea that you clone a Git repo and install uh, two build tools, uh, Maven and Ant, uh, on every web server node for uPortal and build uPortal on every web server node, we are looking for something better than that. We're not even in love with the idea of having to build uPortal once for test, once for dev, once for production, and so forth. We are looking for a, a paradigm of uPortal uh, deployment where you build a package one time and you're able to deploy and configure that package for the environment where it runs uh, adequately, effectively, uh, simply. We also want to support, I've got the last bullet there, we want to support uh, encrypted secrets at rest uh, for uh, things that are sensitive. Uh, furthermore, we have a significant expectation that uh, going forward, looking to the future, that a lot of folks will want to run the uPortal service in a container environment, probably in Docker, and potentially in uh, cloud-based um, you know, computing resources. So uh, that is possible. It has been possible for a long time. I'm aware of uPortal adopters and implementations that do it that way and have for years. Uh, but the, it's, it can be kind of a, a pain in the butt. It's not the way that uPortal is set up out of the box. So we want to move uPortal closer to that kind of deployment paradigm. 
lastly, uh, we just like we are no longer in love with building uPortal everywhere, we, are, we have sort of fallen out of love with Java portlets. Uh, it is a standard for content that is firmly rooted in a, a paradigm of web development that doesn't match the way that we do web development in 2017 and 2018. So we're looking for new ways to put content into the portal. There are a variety of new ways. Uh, actually, uPortal Home, I can see uh, in my own head, I consider uPortal Home as a parallel uh, strategy for content, something different from portlets, uh, and certainly something different from soffits. Uh, but we have in uPortal 5 a new standard for content, something that is in, more similar to Java portlets in scope, but more modern. And this webinar is not about that. I have done presentations about that. There are slide decks that I can uh, point you to, uh, as well as documentation in the uPortal uh, 5 manual. Uh, but I think that's all you'll hear about soffits in this presentation. Lastly, uh, there's a, a link at the bottom. Uh, this page is, is maybe not completely up to date, but it's the wiki page in the Aperio wiki in, in the uPortal space where we originally laid out the design goals for uPortal 5 uh, and have sort of tracked our progress, uh, at least sometimes, towards those goals. Uh, timeline for uPortal 5, uh, it's aggressive, uh, but it, we laid it out before Open Aperio, before the conference, and it really hasn't changed, which is fantastic and slightly surprising because things really haven't slipped from what we said uh, we, you know, would happen at the time. At Open Aperio, we entered a milestone build phase. Uh, we had the first milestone build, 5.0.0 M1, ready before the conference, the Open Imperio conference, ready by hours, I think. Uh, we are currently at M5. Uh, the most recent milestone build of uPortal 5 is M5. It is likely that an M6 will show up before this week is out or as soon as possible or immediately thereafter. We expect to, based on the plans that we have and the things that are unfolding, we expect to enter an RC phase uh, in late September or early October. So in really just in a couple of weeks, give or take. Uh, it, RC, of course, stands for release candidate. So uh, among other things, it means that we're getting more serious. And then about a month later, we expect to have a, a full release, a general audience uh, release of uPortal 5. Uh, it might slip into uh, November. It might, you know, you never know with software. It could slip beyond that. But I will mention uh, that I personally am under a lot of pressure to, to have a release, a full release of uPortal uh, by the end of October because it's a better story for Educause. Uh, I will mention that uh, the scope of things that we hope to tackle in uPortal 5, uh, nearly all of it is not only begun, but uh, more or less complete. There is one item that we had earmarked. It's not on the previous slide because it's sort of an NFR, a non-functional requirement, but we had really hoped to upgrade uPortal to Spring 4 for version 5, and we still do. Uh, it just hasn't been started. We will have to see how that unfolds, but I still intend to, uh, to make a go at that. Which brings us to uh, the focus of the presentation. The rest of the content is on uPortal Start specifically. Uh, I want to pause a moment here to mention a couple things that probably we should have mentioned in the beginning, and I think we overlooked. I think, I think it's best for questions to be put into the chat uh, at, as we go. 
as the process uh, unfolds. Don't don't hold them to the end. We will certainly have time at the end specifically for Q and A. But uh, the best time to ask a question is as we go. Uh, I will have to rely on Jim Helwig to monitor the chat, and I hope he will interrupt me politely uh, to uh, bring those questions to my attention. Uh, at any rate, let's get going with uPortal Start. So what is it? Well, the first thing probably that you need to know about uPortal Start is that it, it's a Git repository. I have the URL right here. It's it's in at present. It's still in the the account called JSIG. Uh, we have a new GitHub account called uPortal Project, where we at some convenient moment, which of course never comes, but at some moment intend to move uPortal technology. Uh, anyway, uPortal Start is a Git repository, and at the moment it lives there. UPortal Start is the means through which you implement UPortal 5. You don't, with UPortal 5, you don't grab the traditional, the, the pre-existing UPortal repository. You grab UPortal Start. UPortal Start allows you to create and maintain the things that make UPortal your portal. It allows you to establish and, and, and maintain your configuration, your data, and your branding, your skin. UPortal Start also provides a, a comprehensive suite of command line interface of CLI tools for managing the process of uh, packaging and deploying uh, your uPortal adoption, your uPortal implementation. These CLI tools are similar, tremendously similar, to the things that you are already familiar with, like deploy war and deploy ear and uh, data import or init DB. Uh, those are ant tasks from the uPortal 4 world. The uPortal 5 world is not based on ant or Maven, it's based on Gradle. Uh, Gradle is the build system for uPortal 5. Gradle has been uh, implemented in the uPortal, the main uPortal repository, as well as in the uPortal start repository. There is no build XML or POM file uh, in any, in the root or any subprojects of uPortal or uPortal start any longer. It's entirely Gradle. What else? Yes, you no longer need to fork, modify, or build the core uPortal uh, repository. We have split things into two. The main uPortal repository is the place where the community of uPortal developers does hacking on the framework. uPortal Start is the place where adopters of uPortal uh, tackle configuration, skin, data, and also working with, you know, packaging, building, packaging up, working with deployments. Anyway, in a moment, you will see how that works. It's very easy to set up uPortal Start. The setup instructions for uPortal 5 based on uPortal Start are a tiny fraction of what they were in uPortal 4. There are only two prerequisites, and they're pretty obvious uh, what they are. It would be somewhat difficult to uh, remove the need for either of these. You must have a Java development kit, a JDK. uPortal 5 runs on JDK 8, and I won't say anything too specific about how well it runs on JDK 9. It's likely that uh, that that will become something that we look at specifically and support. Uh, uPortal 5, working with uPortal 5 and working, <coughs> excuse me, with uPortal Start also requires a Git client. You need to obtain uPortal Start from, from Git somehow, either from GitHub or potentially from uh, GitLab or Bitbucket or whatever your organization uses locally for Git. 
if you have those two prerequisites, all you need to do to set up uPortal 5 uh, is the following three commands. You do not need to set up ant. You don't need to set up maven. You do not need to copy uh, build.properties.sample into build.properties and configure it. Uh, you do not need to go get a Tomcat and configure Tomcat, uh, either with uh, shared libs or with uh, uh, session cookie path slash, all these things that we used to do in uPortal 4. Uh, you clone the repository. You have to cd into the repository, and then you run this command, this dot slash. Now, all these examples are um, Linux-based examples. Uh, you run this command, dot slash, Gradle W, stands for Gradle wrapper. Portal init, uh, portal init, just like init portal in the uPortal 4 world, portal init does several things at once. And then beyond portal init, uh, and I've chained it together in a single command, but beyond portal init, the only other thing that you need to run is Tomcat start. If you do those three things, if you have those two prerequisites and you do those three things, you should end up with a, a uPortal, a uPortal 5 running at localhost 8080. And if you go to localhost 8080 slash uPortal in the same manner that you might for uPortal 4, you will, you will find your uPortal 5. You won't exactly find this. I've, uh, this screenshot is taken after authenticating as the admin user. Uh, I picked this rather than the welcome because this looks more distinctive, maybe not terribly distinctive, but it looks more distinctive as uPortal 5. Uh, you can see that the Layout for the admin tools tab has been updated to be a, uh, a six column page of um, app launchers. Clicking on one of these app launchers, one of these icons will bring up the, the corresponding tool, uh, the portlet administrator, the user administrator, and so forth. Also on this page, you can see, you can barely see, the icon for the notification portlet has been updated to a bell. Uh, I think actually it may be even slightly uh, slightly different from that by the time you see it. Uh, anyway, this this is what you will be greeted with a, a running you portal instance if you follow these instructions. Uh, I want to mention that all of this information so far and uh, several other things <coughs> are covered in the um, in the README for uPortal Start. Uh, there's a pretty detailed README file for uPortal Start that should help you uh, get, going, get going well on good footing. So I mentioned that uPortal Start comes with a suite of CLI tools. Uh, on this slide, I, I have them sort of listed out comprehensively so that we can take a quick tour of those. I don't have every, these are all uh, Gradle tasks in essence, and I don't have every Gradle task listed here. The first three Gradle tasks are tasks, clean tasks and test are things that Gradle uh, gives you by default. Clean, of course, will uh, delete the build directories and clean up all, all previous build artifacts. Tasks, running the tasks task in Gradle will show you a comprehensive list of the tasks that are available. And the test task runs the tests. Those three are provided by Gradle by default. The rest of, of the items on this slide are things that we added. There is, of course, portal init, which we've already seen. Portal init uh, does some interesting stuff. Portal init, actually, uh, it runs the Tomcat install task, which downloads uh, a copy of Tomcat uh, based on a version property that we set and maintain. 
it downloads a copy of Tomcat from Maven Central. Uh, it comes as a tar GZ. The portal start build CLI tools will uh, unarchive that uh, dependency, Tomcat, and set it up locally. It will uh, do all of the configuration to run uPortal that you used to have to do by hand. Uh, portal init will also deploy all of the modules in uh, uPortal start, all of the modules like uPortal itself, the notification portlet, the calendar port portlet, the announcements portlet, the resource server, and so on. UPortal Start, just like UPortal 4 uh, before it, UPortal Start comes with a number of pre-bundled modules, and you are free to update the modules that it comes with, either to remove or to add modules, and that process is much simpler than it was under Maven in UPortal 4. Portal init also runs the data init task, which is top right. Data init uh, does what initDB used to. It uh, deletes all objects from the portal schema. It create, recreates the portal schema, including for modules or portlets that have uh, tables of their own. And it re-imports uh, all of the default data that's included with uPortal start, all of the entities files. So we have, I've kind of grouped them. We have portal init and portal open. It's funny, uh, uPortal start comes with a Gradle task that will open a browser and point you to this localhost 8080 uPortal. That Gradle task is called portal open. The CLI tools include a number of Tomcat tasks. I've already talked about Tomcat install, which in installs Tomcat itself. Tomcat deploy takes the modules that you have, you portal various portlets, uh, and it deploys those modules to Tomcat. Tomcat clean will clean modules out of Tomcat. Tomcat clear logs, resets the logs directory. Uh, that's something that I take advantage of a lot. When I am working on a local development environment, I like to start each run with entirely clear logs. There, and then there is Tomcat start and Tomcat stop. Tomcat start and Tomcat stop do what you might imagine. They start up the Tomcat container uh, or stop it. Then there is a group of data tasks. Uh, I have mentioned data init. Data init does what initDB used to. It uh, completely drops and recreates and reinitializes uh, the portal database. Then there is import export, uh, data import, data export, data delete. And lastly, there is data list. There was a data list uh, ant task in uPortal 4. We have ported that task over to Gradle and uPortal 5. Uh, it's useful. Uh, and then there are, uh, just like in uPortal 4, there are Gradle tasks for stopping and starting the, the embedded hypersonic database. Uh, in uPortal for development portals on our, on our local machines, we ordinarily use uh, HSQLDB, hypersonic, uh, as a database platform for development. In server deployments, we ordinarily, uh, or always to my knowledge, use something else. But HSQL start and HSQL stop will start and stop the database. Typically, we start the database once in the morning and leave it running all day. There is also, and I was surprised to discover this, I did this one crept in without me even realizing, there is uh, HSQL open. Uh, it opens the administrative console provided by Hypersonic itself. It's a GUI tool that allows you to inspect the Hypersonic database. All right, that's a lot for this slide. Next slide. Here are some examples of working with the CLI in uPortal Start. Uh, four of them. The first example is to delete, reinstall, and reconfigure Tomcat. 
also to redeploy all modules. So this one, dot slash Gradle w, w Tomcat install, followed by Tomcat deploy. Uh, notice that just like Maven, just like Ant, you can chain uh, build system commands. You can chain these tasks in a single command on the, in the shell. So uh, Gradle W Tomcat install uh, will run Tomcat install, which completely deletes and recreates Tomcat itself. And then Tomcat deploy, which puts all of your modules into Tomcat. Uh, next example, redeploy the calendar portlet only. You can run these tasks like Tomcat deploy or even data init, as you'll see below. You can run these tasks for an individual module. You don't have to run it for all modules the way you had to in New Portal 4. So you can run Gradle W uh, overlay, overlays colon calendar portlet colon Tomcat deploy, which will deploy, build and deploy only the calendar portlet module which is in the overlays uh, subproject. Next example, reinitialize the announcements portlet database schema only. Uh, similar to the previous example, you can run uh, the task overlays colon announcements colon data init, which will drop, recreate, and repopulate the announcements database schema only within the portal database. These are things that were not easy to do in the previous version of uPortal, and they're pretty cool. Uh, and lastly, there's an example that I use daily, uh, start Tomcat, but with fresh logs. So I run uh, .gradle w uh, with two tasks, Tomcat clear logs, which merely deletes all the files in uh, the logs directory and uh, subdirectories within that and then Tomcat start. So there are four examples of things you might reasonably do working with the CLI tools in uPortal start. So configuration in uPortal start. This is an important topic. Uh, there's a lot of material uh, related to this. I have tried to be uh, succinct. Uh, please do ask your questions. Uh, I will do my best to, to cover this well. So, uh, Brandon did ask a question. Awesome. How do you deploy a portlet app on a portlet that is not already part of the overlay? That's a great question. Uh, there is a way to do that. At some point, someone will contribute a, uh, a new CLI tool Gradle task uh, called perhaps deploy portlet app, uh, which will allow us to do that very thing. I don't have that today, but that would be a reasonable part of what uPortal start can do. You will see shortly, uh, you will see if you look uh, also that the process of bundling uh, modules with uPortal start is quite a bit easier than it was in uPortal 4. Uh, any any follow-ups to that? Not at this time. Yeah, the there's well, no question uh, that this is a vision that's in process and some things that we might like to have are not actually there. Uh, Here, uh, there's another ahead. one. Um, Anthony asks, uh, can portlet data be configured in separate table spaces? It certainly can. It, it certainly can. Each uh, module, including uPortal, including all portlets, can specify its own properties, including database connection information. Uh, there is no issue with that whatsoever. And actually, that's a, a reasonable segue into the next section. Uh, configuration. So all modules within uPortal start are overlays, including uPortal itself. This is different from uh, uPortal 4, where the uPortal source code, uh, all of it, in all its glory, was right there in the same repo with uh, everything else, with uPortal ear and, and so forth. Uh, U -Portal, in uPortal start, uPortal is an overlay on the build of uPortal typically that 
the, the build that the community of uPortal developers cuts and pushes to Maven Central. But you can also, uh, and I've got a slide on this, but you can also run uPortal start with, with a private label, a locally released version of core uPortal, or with a snapshot, locally built snapshot version of uPortal. That's easy to do, uh, and I personally do it all the time. Uh, all modules are overlays uh, if you if you need to so as an overlay it's it's similar to a maven overlay uh, but of course it's not using maven but it behaves very similarly if you need to you can override any file uh, any configuration file in you portal war you can override um, the overlay sorry uh, rdbm.properties you can overlay uh, logback.xml, you can overlay um, uh, group, uh, groups context configuration.xml, uh, anything, any spring file, anything you need to. Uh, but th that is what we hope you don't do. Uh, in other words, we hope that you don't do it that way. Uh, and I will show you in the next two, three slides uh, how we hope you do it. There are three essential parts to configuration in uPortal. Uh, there are properties, there are beans, and there are data. Uh, I will cover the first two independently. Data, I will, I, I don't have content on that. I will not cover data because data works almost identically to previous versions of uPortal. We have import export tools. They are, those tools are wrapped in new uh, Gradle-based tasks that I've already talked about, data, uh, data init, data import, data export, data delete. Uh, they work very similarly to previous versions of uPortal. You are free to uh, manage data in uPortal start in a very compelling way that doesn't require you to uh, rebuild the uPortal locally or uh, overlay files that we wish you wouldn't. Anyway, uh, properties and beans, I'm going, going to cover both of those uh, separately. Uh, in addition to these three items in bold, there are a small number of other configuration items like logback.xml and ehcache.xml that uh, pose some challenges that where we haven't exactly yet worked out uh, elegant ways to configure those things locally. Uh, you are, in, in the meantime, you are free to configure those, by, those files by overlaying them. Uh, we will also endeavor to provide very sensible defaults for those files uh, so that you might not have to. Uh, and in the fullness of time, we will have uh, better strategies for managing logging outside of, uh, besides overlaying that file or for managing caches in the portal. Uh, all right, so moving on to properties configuration. Uh, uPortal and bundled modules handle, they all handle configuration of properties, Java properties through a spring property sources placeholder configurer. Uh, actually, in full disclosure, the the uh, Java class that it uses, that they use, is a custom um, subclass of property sources placeholder configurer because in the uPortal ecosystem, we have added support for encrypted properties at rest using JSIPT. And uh, that is a handy thing to have uh, if it's a requirement for you know, your uh, institution and your uPortal. Uh, <clears throat> right now it is handled through a custom subclass. But in, uh, so property sources placeholder configurer is a spring uh, technology. It, it's a very cool thing. It does a good job of uh, giving you loads of options and very modern options for configuring uh, web applications. In the past, we had problems where 
sure, we had a, a property sources placeholder configurer in U Portal 4, but we had a lot of code that read the properties files directly and did not benefit from uh, that strategy. We have put a lot of work into refactoring uh, uPortal technology so that a lot more of it uses the property sources placeholder configurer. Uh, we are nearly done with that effort. If you encounter something that uh, does not properly benefit from the property sources placeholder configurer, uh, you know, raise your voice, uh, let us know, work with us. That would be that kind of thing would be a legitimate 5.0 bug and would be a legitimate fix in a patch release of 5.0. Anyway, uh, in U Portal, in the U Portal module, the following five files, properties files, are sourced in the property sources placeholder configurer, uh, and and they are. Most of them familiar. Uh, the portal.properties is first, also rdbm.properties and security.properties. All of these uh, very familiar properties files are sourced in the property sources placeholder configurer. I know for a certainty that, that rdbm.properties and security.properties uh, that the values in those two files are only read uh, or only leveraged in your portal through the property sources placeholder configurer. So you can completely 100% take advantage uh, of the things I'm about to describe uh, for any values defined in those files. I Earl? also know, oh, sounds like a question. Yeah, I was going to maybe try to sneak this in as long as we're talking about the uh, property files. Um, is it feasible, Andrew asks, is it feasible to get uh, encrypted properties support into upstream so that it stops being code? Sorry? Is it feasible to get the encrypted property support into upstream so it stops being code to maintain in new portal? Into, uh, into spring? Uh, that's the uh, only thing I can imagine that that means. Uh, my understanding is that more recent versions of Spring handle this requirement. Part of our problem is that we're on Spring 3, which is why we have a bullet item on a previous slide to update to Spring 4. Uh, any any follow-ups for that? Not yet. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so, uh, I just checked the time and I'm doing very poorly. Uh, I will... Um, attempt to go a little faster, but I can go on this call as long as I need to. Uh, uPortal also sources two files that are not inside the uPortal web app. uPortal sources a file called uh, global.properties and a file called uPortal.properties uh, that live in a place called Portal Home. Both of those files are optional. If they don't exist, uPortal will just ignore them. It, they, it might write a, a log message once. Uh, but both of those files are optional. The list is in order, in sort of reverse order of uh, priority. So later files override earlier files. So essentially what we've got, we have default settings in rdbm.properties for, uh, for database connection information. But if you want to connect to a different database, and you will, you don't go change those settings in rdbm.properties, you leave them alone. What you do is define those database connection properties inside uportal.properties or for many people even better, inside global.properties so that, um, so that you, can, you control that configuration outside of the build and deploy uh, process outside of Tomcat, um, the Tomcat web apps directory. Uh, other modules, so that's the list for you portal. Other modules follow a similar pattern. They typically have fewer files, but other modules will source some properties files that are in their own web app and that contain default settings. Uh, and those defaults might be great for a local development environment, but they won't be for production or for server deployments. So you have the ability in Portal Home 
to define uh, settings for other modules. Other modules will source global.properties, but they won't source uportal.properties. They will source something like calendar.properties or announcements.properties. Uh, each module always sources its own properties file last. So if you want to, if you want to have one database that for you portal and for three portlets, but you have another portlet that you want to have its own database, all you have to do is define database connection information in, for example, announcements.properties, and it will connect to its own uh, database. All right. Uh, portal, more on the portal home directory. Uh, it, it is a directory where properties files may be placed, uh, yeah, as I've kind of described. The values in those files will override the same settings inside the web app. System gives you control of the application, uh, the whole application, you portal itself and other modules outside of the traditional build package deploy process. So this is a, a big part of this package once run anywhere. Uh, notion, promise, that uh, the, the original build, when you build uPortal for your local institution, uh, you should be able to, uh, to configure environment-specific stuff outside of that package. The default location of Portal Home is server base slash portal. So normally that works out to tom, tomcat slash portal. The portal directory is a sibling of the web apps directory and the logs directory inside Tomcat. Uh, but you may change the location of portal home. Uh, you have a lot of options. You can specify your own location in, in this path, build source, source main resources, build defaults dot properties in new portal start. Uh, if you do that, that would be sort of a, uh, project-wide uh, configuration. Probably you don't want to do that. In a, in a single clone of uPortal Start, you can configure it in build.properties. There is no build.properties file by default. It's not required, but if you create one, you can define things there, and uPortal Start will honor those uh, settings. Uh, you can define portal home directly as a JVM argument, uh, as, as shown in the example, dash D portal home equals something. Uh, or you can define uh, portal home as an environment variable. If you do that, uh, you use all caps, uh, all capital portal underscore capital home. Uh, and you portal start and you portal running inside Tomcat. Uh, will honor those things. Uh, so here is a, a, an example of things that you might set in global.properties. And I think this will, I think this approach will be tremendously common. I think actually very soon, uPortal start by default will tackle database configuration in this way. Uh, and that will allow us to take the the various uh, data source dot properties files out of the modules, uh, out of the overlays for all the modules. It will mean one less, one fewer uh, file per overlaid module that we need to, to manage. Uh, so that's it for properties configuration. The next topic is beans configuration. Uh, and clearly, uh, I can't support uh, a lot more content on this, but a lot more content on this could be warranted. Uh, we hope that you will not overlay uh, spring configuration files in uPortal or any other modules. We have a new plan. The new plan is that the natural extension points of uPortal and of uh, uPortal ecosystem modules uh, will allow you to define extra beans in the in the context in the spring application context, which will simply be detected inside the module and used appropriately. A great example is with uh, person directory with user attribute uh, configuration in uPortal five. You do not need to you do not need to create or to overlay 
a person directory context.xml file. Uh, many of you will be familiar with that thing. I think it is several hundred lines of XML, mostly boilerplate. Uh, as a matter of fact, in uPortal 5, there is no such thing as a person directory context.xml file. All of that spring configuration was moved to uh, Java-based configuration. Uh, there is a, a class annotated with at configuration inside uPortal 5 that does uh, user attribute, the basics of user attribute configuration. When you want to integrate your sources of user attributes in uPortal 5, and you will, all you need to do is emit into the application context a new bean that implements iPerson attributes DAO. Uh, uPortal 5 will find it and will insert it into the stack, into uh, the user attribute uh, decorator pattern uh, appropriately so that your configuration will be honored. And I've got an example of that uh, in XML, so uh, there's loads of it. But uh, this is a, an example that you might put into overrides context.xml. Uh, which is a, an XML file that already exists in uPortal Start. It's empty. It just has the top-level beans element in it right now, but it, um, it, it is possible to define beans in here. In this example, I have defined a bean called layout nodes count person attribute DAO. It uses a single row JDBC person attribute DAO from uh, the person directory project. Uh, so it's a JDBC data source for user attributes. I have specified a query. Uh, this one merely commit, uh, connects to the uPortal database, but you could specify a different data source. Uh, this one uses a query against the uPortal data source to figure out whether, uh, to figure out how many nodes are in the user's customized uh, layout and it emits a, uh, a user attribute called layout nodes count that has a numer numeric value, the number of nodes uh, the user in the user's custom layout. Uh, that is how configuration of beans is intended to work in uPortal 5. The natural extension points, you just define a new bean. You don't need to mess with all the other beans in uPortal. Uh, we have, I'm, I'm not even sure, we have several thousand lines of Spring XML configuration in uPortal, and the intent is that you should be able to ignore it. Uh, you should be able to handle things like user attributes uh, simply by defining a bean that gets added to the Spring context, and it will be detected, picked up, and leveraged appropriately. Brandon asks, uh, can you have multiples of those? One you can. One to another uh, after absolutely. So you can, you can define multiples, and all of them will be found and used. If you need special things, if you need, for example, cascading, where you reach out to LDAP first to get something like the PIDM or the EMPL ID, and then using the PIDM or the EMPL ID, you reach out to another data source like maybe Banner, uh, to query for more attributes. That is completely supported, but you will have to define the cascading bean and the beans that do the heavy lifting within it yourself. Uh, and if you define the cascading bean as a top-level bean, you portal will pick it up and, and do the right thing with it. I think you uh, can do one minute per slide. Nope. Sorry, <laughs> folks. I'm going to run over. That's just the reality. Uh, Three slides now. Uh, I want to talk about skinning. Uh, you need to be able to skin the portal, and uPortal Start supports that. The process works very similarly to uPortal 4, except that your skin files are inside uPortal Start, and the core uPortal default skin files are inside uPortal itself. So you define uh, a number, basically three files in a directory structure, as illustrated here. And uPortal Start will compile the less files that you provide. You can provide other kinds of files, like images, uh, JavaScript, anything you want. But 
uPortal Start will compile the less that you provide uh, using, based on the bootstrap sources that are that come from uPortal itself, and ultimately package it all up together uh, with your skin into the uPortal war that gets deployed to Tomcat. Uh, customization of uPortal. Uh, if you look back 10 years ago uh, to the earliest days of uPortal and to many area, eras of uPortal, uh, customization of the framework itself was a very big thing. Uh, I believe that, with few exceptions, customization of the uPortal framework is not, not really a big thing any longer. Uh, we have focused very hard on providing a framework that is itself naturally flexible so that you don't have to change the Java code that comes from Aperio. Uh, we, we've done tremendous amounts of work uh, over time in that area. We've done uh, an additional, an incremental tremendous amount of work for uPortal 5, and we will continue to polish that plan going forward. You really ought not to have to uh, alter things in uPortal. You should be in a position to use a use uPortal technology that is built by uh, Aperio and the uPortal community of developers. But of course, you, you retain the option, you may build a, and use a private label version of uPortal. And particularly if you're a uPortal contributor, you will want to uh, build and use a, a local snapshot version of uPortal. If you are, you know, fixing a bug, adding a feature, enhancing an existing fig, uh, feature, you're doing some refactoring, there are loads of occasions where you will want to run a snapshot build of uPortal, and that is completely feasible. You just change the uPortal version property inside Gradle.properties at the root of uPortal start. As, as far as other types of customizations, basically the, the pattern of defining new spring beans and adding them to the application context, we hope that will sufficiently, sufficiently solve any needs for local customizations going forward. If it doesn't, for goodness sake, let us know. Let us work with you uh, to make that possible. All right, advantages of the new para paradigm, there are many. I have boiled it down to these. Uh, a lot of these things you will have picked up on as we went along, but I think it's valuable to uh, hit them in this fashion quickly. You do not need to install Ant, nor do you need to install Maven. You don't even need to install Gradle because our use of Gradle in uPortal Start and in uPortal itself is based on the Gradle wrapper, which is a version of Gradle that you bake directly into your project. Uportal Start installs, it downloads, installs, and configures Tomcat for you. Uh, you do not need to do that by hand uh, ahead of uh, running Uportal for the first time. I cannot, as someone who has observed the Uportal list for years, uh, I cannot tell you, uh, but I know it is large, what percentage of troubleshooting questions to the list relate to setting up Tomcat for the first time. Uh, I can also tell you, and I think it will be no surprise, that I think a lot of newcomers historically have developed a, a, an early level of frustration with uPortal based on uh, the learning curve involved in getting Tomcat set up for the first time. Because the way that uPortal, uh, more specifically the way that uh, the Java portlet API and runtime environment use uh, Tomcat uh, is a bit arcane. uPortal Start does all that for you, and this is important. In uPortal 5 and uPortal Start, you should consider the Tomcat container as a deliverable of uh, the uPortal Start build process itself. The best sure. way to get Tomcat installed on a server is to take a copy that was produced by uPortal Start. It sounds like there's a question. Yeah, Drew, I think maybe if somebody uh, didn't want to do that, Brandon asks, uh, can you configure your own Tomcat? Yes, you certainly can. Just don't run uh, Tomcat install. 
All you have to do, all you would have to do is go get, well, for one thing, if, if the only thing you want to do different in Tomcat is to use a different version, then just change the, ver the Tomcat version property in New Portal Start, and you will use a different version. But if you really do want uh, to obtain a, a different Tomcat and, and monkey with it extensively, you can do that. You just have to uh, set, you do that on your own, then you set the values of uh, Catalina Home and Catalina Base uh, in uPortal Start. And then you can run the other tasks appropriately. Uh, just don't run uh, Tomcat install. Any follow-ups to that? No. Oh. All right. So, uh, but most of you, generally speaking, I, th I believe you should consider uh, Tomcat, the Tomcat container, as a deliverable of the uh, uPortal start build and packaging processes. Uh, this notion is important for moving forward to the world of Docker and containers, actually, because when uPortal start is building uh, a Docker container, it will clearly need to obtain and properly configure Tomcat on your behalf. Uh, Build.properties is not required. You may use it. You still can have one, and you can set things like the location of Tomcat in there, but it's not required. You can run, unlike uPortal 4, you really can do anything on a single submodule. Uh, for a, and I had examples of that earlier, but here's another one. Uh, Gradle W overlays calendar portlet Tomcat deploy. It would deploy only the calendar portlet, which, by the way, takes about six seconds, maybe fewer. All da data is in the data directory, not in some deep arcane place like ePortal War source main data. Uh, there is a data subdirectory at the root of uPortal start, and the data is there. Furthermore, all of the data is there. The data for newsreader, the data for calendar, the data for announcements, it's all contained in the same place. It is not sprinkled all over the, um, uh, you know, all over the subprojects. Builds are very fast. Right now, the only thing that is uh, remotely slow is import-export interacting with the database, and primarily that is because we still have a few kinks in the uh, JGroups uh, configuration. Uh, when you run a, an import-export task uh, in uPortal itself, uh, it doesn't apply to other modules, but when you run one in uPortal itself, uh, it, um, JGroups fusses around for like 20 seconds or more and it makes the process slow. Uh, but other things, particularly if, uh, if you don't do a clean, but even if you do a, a clean, uh, are remarkably fast. Uh, like redeploy you portal in 10 seconds or less fast. Uh, assemble once, run anywhere. This has been one of the big themes. The, the notion is that when you build you portal five, you can take the outcome of that build and put it on any server. Uh, you can uh, build a, a distribution of uPortal. You can, you can set it aside. You can put it on the dev server, allow the developers to approve it. You can put the same build on the test server, allow the stakeholders to approve it, and you can uh, take the very same build and put it into production. Uh, and all you need to do is manage the uh, environment-specific configuration separately. Uh, and typically, environment-specific configuration does not boil down to beans. Typically, it only boils down to uh, properties files, which are easier. Uh, uPortal 5 and uPortal Start are much friendlier to container-based deployments. Uh, we already have at least one institution working intimately with Docker and uPortal Start. Sh shortly, uh, at some time in the near future, we expect that uPortal Start will be capable of building a Docker container, um, you know, a complete and ready to go Docker container uh, for uPortal 5. All right, I made it, sort of. Uh, more questions? I think I'm going to stop sharing so I can read the chat directly. Yep, Andrew's point is a good one. In the 
in the paradigm that we have known uh, for managing these kinds of applications, quite commonly Tomcat is managed by uh, another group uh, outside of the portal development team. But if we move to a container-based, those of us who move to container-based deployments of uPortal, uh, will the container will be baked into, sorry, the uh, servlet container, Tomcat, it will be baked into the Docker container. There's not really any way to get around that. You can uh, interact, you can work with the ops team to figure out how Tomcat should be configured, but it would be included in the Docker container. Uh, I know I've run over, but I'm available, and there must be someone uh, out there uh, with additional questions. Okay. Well, it was a thorough presentation. I hope so. Speechless. Thank you, Andre, for asking the very point that I was trying to make uh, hastily and um, hastily and uh, inadequately was that the training that I'm aware of for developer days uh, will not cost extra. Uh, I'm going to ask Jim to uh, maybe say a word or two about this uh, after the fact, but we, we early on, initially we explored the idea of doing a, you know, a multi-day formal facilitated training uh, at the dev days. And if there are people who want to sign up for that, uh, we can potentially make that happen. And, you know, and that can be 100% overlap with dev days or potentially, I'm not sure if it can, honestly, but, but maybe we could explore uh, having that training extend beyond the regular dev days. Uh, we are open to that, uh, you know, multi-day formal facilitated training uh, for for a cost, but what I mostly expect is that uh, the event will contain only you know two, three, four hour workshops, uh, maybe one or two, uh, and those will not be an additional cost. So, for example, you're thinking of maybe a um, uh, you know how to get up and running with um, U portal five or something. Exactly. As a, as we a, uh, a ten minute workshop on that. Yeah. Uh, the so Jonathan, absolutely, you have uh, in house developed custom portlets. Uh, those are very easy to bundle with U portal start. Let me let me maybe illustrate. Uh, I will go back to screen sharing in a second. This is uPortal Start. This is a Perio uPortal Start. Uh, I've got a couple things I'm working on, but otherwise it is line for line, character for character, exactly what's in master. Uh, each module in uPortal Start uh, lives in the overlays directory, including uPortal. But in terms of adding more portlets, all you do is you create a folder you need a uh, you need a add a, a build that gradle. Oh, this is an awful example because it's complex. Uh, I'm going to pick one that's much simpler. Uh, weather should be quite a bit simpler. Yeah. So you need a build that gradle that uh, does honestly very little. You need to apply the gradle Pluto plugin, and you need to specify what you're overlaying. Uh, and you also need to uh, specify what the ultimate war name should be. But for a typical custom portlet, this is as complex as it gets, and it's not. Uh, so you need to you need to have a folder, and inside that folder, you need to have a build.gradle. Uh, you also need to, in settings.gradle, you need to list your submodule, or else Gradle won't find it. Uh, inside the weather portlet, then, then you just have source main resources, source main web app, where you overlay, you add uh, files that you want to include in the ultimate war. And if there aren't any, you don't need any files. 
In this case, uh, in the weather portlet, we're overlaying log back, and the reason for that is we want to set uh, the location of the log files to uh, Catalina base slash logs, which is not what the original weather portlet defines. Let's see. Anthony also asked um, when overlaying the skin, can the XSLT be overlaid? Uh, can the XSLT be overlaid? It can. And I'm not sure that's a great idea. Uh, I would prefer it, I think, if maybe if, well, I prefer it if no one does this, but if you must, uh, I think what you want to do is define your own theme. You can start with responder, but call it, you know, responder local or responder my you. Uh, and then you would need a data file to define the theme in the database and wire it into uPortal appropriately. Uh, but it's, um, Responder has been designed uh, painstakingly and aggressively so that uh, no one should need to alter the XSL. Uh, a lot of that is from a desire on the part of most everybody involved with uPortal never to alter XSL again in our lives. The next stage, uh, some next stage coming very soon for uPortal and for uh, responder uh, and for theming uPortal is to take the XSLT out of it and make it based on something else. Is there anything else we missed? We've covered a lot. It's a lot to digest. Please uh, start working with you portal start kick the tires bring it down uh, let us know if you encounter any issues let us know if the documentation is incorrect or um, misleading or uh, incomplete of course it's incomplete but glaringly incomplete uh, please pitch in that would be deeply appreciated please attend the dev days uh, clearly a lot of the focus of the dev days uh, will be on the new world of U Portal 5, uh, you know, new world of U Portal based on U Portal 5 and other things. How that plays out for portlets, how that plays out for other kinds of content, uh, uh, you know, how to uh, migrate to it, how it works with U Portal Home, and so forth. Well, thanks, Drew. Thanks everyone else for uh, attending the call and hopefully we'll be able to see many of you in person in a couple months.